Hi guys and welcome back. Today in this episode we will continue on the series of the Raspberry Pi Grafana integration. And in this serial we will show you how to make this. A cable that you connect between your Raspberry Pi and your inverter from, for instance, MPP Solar that utilizes the RG45 plug. When it comes to gear to be used when you are creating your own serial adapter for your Raspberry Pi to connect to your inverter, there are a couple of things to think about. First of all, the Raspberry Pi only handles 3.3 volt. Meanwhile, many inverters are actually running at 5 volt. And this could potentially harm the Raspberry Pi and actually destroy the Raspberry Pi's IO port. There are a couple of inverters that do run at 3.3 volt and they will be fine hooking up directly to the serial port on the Raspberry Pi. But if you have for instance the PCM60X or the PIP4048 or any other inverter with only serial port, then you need to consider having some sort of TTL adapter that converts the 3.3 volt to 5 volt. And on this layout here I have two of them here. They are both utilizing the chipset that's called the RS3232 from Max. And that chipset is actually done in such a way that it can convert the signals. This is the first type of adapter that I have here that is commonly used. One thing about this one is that it has the female header here and on the computer you need or depending on where you hook it up, you need the male one instead to be able to hook it up to the cable directly from the PCM or the MPP manufacturer. I have an example here where I made this adapter. As you can see, this is goes into the Raspberry Pi and I have hooked up the cable that goes to the inverter on the other side instead. And this is one way of doing it. Today though, on the other hand, I will be showing you a little bit more slim method using this small chip here. This is the same functionality as we have on the bigger one. Except that this small one have a lot more pads. So you have in and out, in out on the top side and you also have in out, in out on the bottom side. And that's because this chip actually can convert in two different ways. I'm not going to go into that today because that's irrelevant for many of the users. On the other hand, you need to be very very clear on how you do this so you do connect it correctly because if you don't, you may destroy the Raspberry Pi anyways. So we leave this aside for now. The connection on many of the MPP solar inverters is actually by RG45. RG45 is a contact that you use for network, so that's why I have this network cable here. Many of us have network cables laying around, so I'm going to use a network cable in this case because I have plenty of them. The header on the Raspberry Pi is a normal 2.54mm header and I have one female here. It's just a matter of cutting it off and you can insert it on top here and solder the wires on. To cover this all up when it comes to this small ship, I have some heat shrink tube and that will go on top of that small ship. Unfortunately, it's not that easy to actually attach this directly to the header. You could potentially glue it on top of here and have it that way and have the cables going out. I'm not going to do that in this case. I'm going to sleeve it outside and for doing that I need cables. And I'm using these silicon cables that I bought from eBay and they work pretty good. I do recommend them for doing stuff like this one here. I start with making sure that we have the cables here and I'm just going to cut off one of the ends I don't need that end. Uh, make sure when you are running with network cables that you try to get a cable that does not have a solid core because the solid core cables tend to break a lot easier when we have this cable here it's now important to understand which one of the strands that you are going to use the cable on the inverter is using the two top end over there and then the bottom end over here. So we need to distinguish them and get them in where we want them. It's the green and the white green and we have the brown white. So those are the cables that we are going to sort out and the rest we are just cutting because those are, are not going to be used. Then we take them, remove a little bit on the end once again, if you don't have this type of pliers, check out my video of that and buy a couple of them. They are dead cheap and they work great. It's now a matter of actually soldering this little ship onto this one 
And the fact that we have this many pads and out and in going on this ship it's really really important to have this the correct way. And to do this you're going to turn this one upside down. When you have it upside down we have outgoing and ingoing plus and minus on this side here, the left side, and that's the side that is going into the inverter. And basically what we have here, the top one there will be going to the second one from top. And in my case the second one from top here is the white green. The second one on this little board will go on the top wire here, that is the green wire. So let's hook them up. To solder this is always easier to have a helping hand and I'm going to use this one here that will hold this in place. And then it's just a matter of wetting the pads like that. And then we start with the bottom one. The bottom one or first pin on the RE45 is the ground. So we start with that one. The white green was the seventh one and the seventh one we know should go to the top here and there we have that one so basically we have the first part done but before we get any further I'm going to add a little bit of shrink tube on this when it comes to the Raspberry Pi we take a look at the pinout we'll see that we will be using the 3.3 volt power that are on pin number 1. We will also be using the ground that are on pin number 6. And then we have the TXD0 and the RXD0 that are on pin number 8 and 10. That means we are going to use 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 of the pins in the length and that means we need to have five here. One, two, three, four, five. So we are going to cut it there. And that will give us two, four, six, eight, ten pins. So let's clean this up a little bit. And to solve this I actually like to put this on the Raspberry Pi directly. So what we now need to do is hook this up to this little board and in this case we need to hook up four wires. Four wi wires since we need the ground we need a positive to actually drive this car board and we're going to do that with 3.3 volt and we need the TXD and RXD for the communication. Roughly 10 centimeters long every one. So I start with the red for the positive the 3.3 volt and then I go back with black for the ground and then I take green for the TXT or the RXT it really doesn't matter and then I use yellow for the last one you can use whatever colors you want you can even use wires from the RG45 cable if you want that's fine too I prefer the red for the 3.3 Let's start with that one. The black is for the ground. And then I use yellow for 8. And then green for number 10. Make sure you don't have any cold joints here. And when you have it all soldered together, let's take a look at it. We have the red, number 1 black on number 6, yellow on number 8 and green on number 10. We are going to solder the next four cables on the underside as well. So let's wet them up a little bit and add some solder. It's now matter to actually tighten them together and I'm going to add this cable sleeve here on top of it. And when you finally get it all in, this is how it looks like. Then I'm going to add some hot glue to this side to save it, to make sure that it actually will not cause any problem. 
and this once again you need to make sure that you do this correctly I'm going to start with the positive and the negative or the ground and that's the red and the black and they should be black on the minus the next one that is input should go to TXD on the Raspberry and the TXD on the Raspberry if you remember correctly is the yellow one and the last one is the green one that's basically the cable and most things are done before you go any further I do recommend that you actually test this cable out to make sure that it do work don't forget that this one needs to be on the correct base on the raspberry that means that red will go to the top like that it's time to actually bundle the cable together and make it very pretty and the cost of this whole cable came under I would say one dollar in total so that's rather cheap to make your own USB serial adapter cable so it's time to actually fed this on top of this here but before this I like to add some hot glue on the joints to make it a little bit more non-fragile so do not add hot glue before you know that this is going to work And here we have the finished result. I must say myself, I'm pretty darn happy with this result. Of course, you can most likely do better in this end here, but on the other hand, it's material that I had handy. Um, I have tested this device and it works perfectly fine. Note that on some Raspberry Pis like version 3, you need to do a couple of settings or change a couple of settings to get it working because the normal serial port is actually attached to the Bluetooth but the cable itself works fine as long as you follow my instructions down below I will be posting a link to my webpage where I have drawings on how I done it and a couple of images as well so hopefully as long as you follow that it should not go wrong I have also posted all the links to materials in this video for instance heat rings the adapter board, the converter board, the pin header, the cables, the wires, everything. So if you want to buy anything of those, just go down, check it out, click on it, buy it, and you have it home in a couple of weeks, depending on where you get it from. Thank you guys for watching another one of my DIY episodes. In this episode, I went through with you how to create this cable that I have here, that utilizes Raspberry Pi and creates a 33 volt logic signal so you can talk to most of the inverters out there that are running on the serial port especially the one from MPP Solar that are utilizing this RG45 can cable uh, I only use this with a normal network cable that I found in my trash and it worked great if you like this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for some reason 80% of the views on my channel are not subscribed and we need to change that and if you want to support my work, we have Patreon links below and Paypal as well. Thank you guys once again, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Bye! Bye!